Hello, welcome back to another YouTube video. In today's video, we're going to be covering why I do not use a daily bias. Now, before we start, I do want to emphasize that if you use a daily bias for your strategy, that is fine. I am not here to try and tell you, you should not trade this way. You should not do this. You should do this instead. I am showing you the approach that I take so you can make your own decision whether you want to try and use the same methods to help improve your trading. And this is one of the problems with the trading space. There are so many people out there trying to clickbait people saying you should not do this. What you're doing is rubbish. OK, if you use a daily bias and it has a place within your strategy, that is great. It does not have a place within my strategy, however, and I'm going to explain why. And there's one particular trade here that we took on the 22nd of May on Wednesday morning. That is a prime example as to why we do not use a daily bias. So if you are not familiar with how the DRS strategy works, I will post a link in the top right hand corner for you to go and check out the video for the strategy, because the rest of this video will make a little bit more sense if you understand how the strategy works. So let's have a look at how price action has developed here. Now, we are looking at UK 100. UK 100 works absolutely beautifully with the DRS strategy. So does Euro USD. Now, seven o'clock in the morning we can see we had some inflation data out for the uk which then caused this sharp downwards candle and if we look to the left what we can see uh, this candle was trying to do is try to make a run for this daily low so this dotted line hopefully you can see that just there there's a dotted line there and this drs indicator is then presenting this is a liquidity point so we have a solid line here representing liquidity that we are waiting to be taken before we can enter a trade. Now, if you're looking for a daily bias, you're likely going to be looking at this thinking, right, I'm only going to be looking for shorts, which is fine. If that's your approach, brilliant. But this is going to showcase why we don't need to look for a daily bias and still able to capitalize on certain types of moves. So let's advance price forward a little bit. And just before we start, I just want to emphasize these vertical lines here these are our trading windows so we've got eight o'clock in the morning until nine o'clock in the morning this is the only time we will be looking for a trade setup in the morning any trade setup outside will not be valid and the reason for this is because we trade for our freedom we don't want to be sitting in front of the charts all day every single day replacing a nine till five with another full-time job so the whole point of the drs is to have some freedom within your trading so let's advance this forward a little bit and let's see how everything starts to develop. So London has opened. We've got this bearish candle just here. Let's advance it forward a little bit more. We've got another one. Push forwards again. We can now see that liquidity line has disappeared. So let's just look over to the left. This dotted line, which we said was the daily low, we can see that has now been taken just ever so slightly. OK, but before we start jumping into a trade, we need to get some confirmation that price is going to go one way or the other. So now we can see we've got another bearish candle. It has struggled to close below this level here. All right. So at this point, we're going to be waiting to see, do we see a reaction pushing upwards or is the momentum going to continue down? So the very next candle, as we can see here, we've got a very strong engulfing candle that has then taken the previous high. So what we can see here, we do have uh, the direction of the market is now changing. So we're going from bearish to bullish. OK, I call this an SMS, a shifting market structure. It's pretty much the same thing as a change of character. All we're looking for is that price has gone from bearish to bullish or bullish to bearish. We're not looking for the specific entry criteria model for a change of character. That's why I just refer to it as an SMS. It's pretty much the same thing. So now we have this candle pushing to the upside. We can now start to look for, is this going to be a displacement candle for our fair value gap? So next candle, we could then see we have, this is candle three. Candle two is this big, long white candle. Candle one is this small candle just here. So let's zoom in a little bit further and we can start to now prepare our trade entry. So this is where we're now going to start looking for long trades. OK, now, before we start sizing up where the entry is going to be, what we need to establish is how big is this fair value gap? OK, so this fair value gap, we're going to measure that. We can now see that this is six point seven points. All right. Not pips, but points because we're using the UK 100. We're trading indices here. So we can now place our entry on the midline of the fair value gap. If the fair value gap was smaller than five points, then we'll be using the very edge here. So. 
we can now set our stop loss to the low of candle one. So we've got a stop loss of about 8.31 points. Now we're going to be targeting a one to two, nothing more, nothing less. Now I've said many times before in other YouTube videos, Instagram posts, that we need to spend as much time planning the exit of our trade as we do planning the entry. So we can see we've planned our entry. We know where we want to be getting into the market. We also know where, if the market goes against us, where we're going to be getting out. But we really want to be looking at where is our take profit because I see so many traders They'll be looking at something like this. They'll be saying, right, I want to target up here because it's a fair value gap. It has to be refilled. It doesn't have to be refilled. Not anytime soon. It could easily go down trend thousands of pips below your stop loss before it comes back up, you know, in months or years down the line to refill this. So it doesn't have to be refilled anytime soon. So this is the reason we're only going to be targeting one to twos, because if we have high expectations of our trade setups and we want to target one to fives, one to tens, Bearing in mind, they are possible, those types of trades. They are not a consistent way of trading. So, and what we want to be doing with the DRS is minimizing how much stress and chart time we have when we are trading. Now, some of you have also commented on my trades in the past and said, well, if you targeted up here, you could have taken partials midway and stuff like that. But that requires trade management. I just want to be in the trade, close the chart, get on with my day and have nothing to do with the charts until I need to come back later on and make sure stop losses at break even at the six o'clock threshold in the evening or to manually close the trade at nine o'clock at night. They are the only times other than the trading windows I will be looking at the charts. So this is why I like to have a conservative one to two like there and now the target what is the reason for our target to be met well there's a couple of reasons we have this fair value gap just here then we also have another fair value gap just above so these this is very likely going to attract price towards it and potentially tap into this fair value gap at some point like i said earlier it doesn't have to refill the entire thing it can come back for the rest of it at a later date but these are going to be the points that we will be using as our target so let's advance price forwards we can see the very next candle after setting the entry, we were refilled. And we can see the very next candle after that, it did come close to stop loss. It was about two points, I think it was, away from uh, tagging our stop loss. About 2.3 points, so it's not really a big drama. If you were sitting there staring at this, it probably would have made you a little bit twitchy. But we don't need to sit here and watch our trades. There's going to be one of two outcomes. It's either going to hit stop loss or it's either going to hit TP. And sitting there watching your trade is not going to make one or the other trigger faster so there's no point sitting there staring at the trades so let's keep advancing price forwards we can see the very next candle after this it comes very close to our tp we've had a little bit of a pullback just here this is all natural this is the market's just breathing we can then see the next candle has tried to push a little bit higher and then the next candle after that is the one that has triggered the take profit now you might be looking at this thinking well spreads might not have filled your take profit and yeah you're probably right so let's advance it forwards a little bit more and as you can see, we've got a nice, comfortable closure above our take profit. So this is something I always do when I'm back testing. If I get a candle like this, I do not typically record the trade until we have a nice closure beyond our TP. If we don't get a nice closure beyond this TP, then I'll just record it as a possible take profit if I'm back testing. Now, going back to the original point of the video, why I do not use a daily bias. Now, there's a handful of ways you can work out a daily bias depending on your style of trading, depending on your approach. Now, we only use one time frame, and that's the five minute. We do not use multi time frame analysis. The one hour, the 30 minute, anything like that has no place within the DRS strategy. We are only using one time frame. It helps us keep things rule based, it helps us keep things mechanical, and it's also helping with coding the strategy into an expert advisor which there will be more information about in the near future. But one way some people might look at a daily bias is they've seen a daily low being taken. They're expecting the rest of the day to be bullish. Maybe they are looking at how overall price action is opened and they are looking for the direction to continue. So no matter what your approach is for working out your daily bias, it doesn't mean one is correct, the other is wrong. It just means there is a couple of ways that you could really determine a bias, maybe more ways that I've not covered. So for that reason, the daily bias doesn't really have a place within the DRS strategy. It's another complexity that 
and add more subjectivity to the way the DRS strategy works. So let's now just advance price forwards. Let's just let it open for the rest of the day. Let's just see what happens later on. So as you can see, price has just started to push even lower. We've had a little bit of a correction. We've tried filling in some of this fair value gap over here, and then price has continued tumbling below the London low here, and it's also continued pushing below this daily low over here. But as you can see, we've already been in and out of our trade before the rest of that daily momentum has managed to kick in. So this is a relatively short video. I just wanted to showcase one example as to why I do not use a daily bias. And the reason I wanted to do this video is because I actually get this question quite a lot. I get a lot of people in my DMs on Instagram, maybe commenting on YouTube videos or even sending me emails with their analysis, which is fine. I'm happy for you to do that. But I get the question quite a lot. What is your view for the week ahead? Week ahead? And I don't have a view. The only time I'm going to be analyzing the charts and looking for potential trade directions is when I'm inside this trading window, eight till nine in the morning or three till four in the afternoon. These are the only times I'm going to be looking at the charts, trying to determine which direction I'm going to be trading. Now, my chart time is absolutely minimal. At most, I'm having about two hours of chart time per day, one hour here, one hour here. And then maybe a little bit later, I might have a couple of minutes where I need to get stop loss to break even at six o'clock in the evening or close the trade manually at nine o'clock at night. Like I said, those are the only times I am looking at the charts. I don't need to try and guess or try and foreshadow where the markets are going to be this time next week or what the market's going to be doing tomorrow. The only time I'm going to be looking to see which direction we're going is in the moment in these two trading windows. So hopefully you found some use for this. Again, this is not me saying you do not need to use a daily bias. And I'm not trying to shit on anyone that does use a daily bias because if it works for you, perfect. I hope it works well and I hope you're profitable from it. But I wanted to showcase this because if there is other people trading a similar approach or want to use the DRS strategy, then I just wanted to emphasize that the daily bias doesn't really have much use here. So hopefully you found this useful. If you have any questions, as usual, feel free to drop a comment or drop me a DM on Instagram. I'd be more than happy to answer any of your questions. But until then, trade safe.